The Boltzmann constant is one of the fundamental constants of our universe. It relates the thermal energy of particles in a gas to the temperature of the gas and therefore plays a crucial role in thermodynamics. Today it stands at a value of 1.380649 times 10 to the negative 23rd joules per Kelvin. The constant itself is named after none other than Ludwig Boltzmann, and it is even imprinted on his gravestone. However, the constant was not discovered by him, nor was its value. The constant K did not show up in theoretical physics until after the height of Boltzmann's scientific contributions at the hands of German physicist Max Planck. Yes, the same Max Planck who discovered another fundamental constant which is named after him called Planck's constant. In fact, he discovered the two constants almost in simultaneity, deriving Planck's constant in late 1900 and the Boltzmann constant the very next year. So why is it called the Boltzmann constant if it wasn't Boltzmann who derived it? The answer lies in how Planck derived the constant and how he chose his words in his paper in which it was derived. Planck and Boltzmann, in years prior, did not exactly share the same theoretical scientific mindset. In 1877, Boltzmann introduced a logarithm to determine the probability of energy states in the system. P denotes the total number of permutations, or arrangements, possible for energy states in a system. W is a distribution's probability, and N is the number of molecules in the system. Boltzmann then states that the most likely state distribution happens at these probabilities for which P is maximized, meaning the denominator in this equation is minimized, given that the numerator is a constant. It is now here where he introduces the logarithm. Since the denominator of P is a product, it is easiest to determine the minimum value of its logarithm. That is, the minimum of this equation. Here, ln is the natural logarithm. In this same paper, Boltzmann says that this equation is related to entropy, but does not say how or give any equation for it. Now, Planck during this time was still in graduate school, but as his career progressed and he obtained his doctorate, he developed quite a specialization in thermodynamics and was a key advocate for its second law, which states that entropy always increases in an isolated system. However, Planck did not adhere to the probabilistic interpretation of entropy that was dominant at the time thanks to the works of Boltzmann and others. Due to his obsession with entropy, he even doubted the existence of atoms, which was not an uncommon position to take at the time. Max himself stated in his autobiography that, quote, I regarded the principle of the increase of entropy as no less immutably valid than the principle of the conservation of energy itself, whereas Boltzmann treated the former merely as a law of probabilities, and therefore I was not only indifferent, but to a certain extent even hostile to the atomic theory, which was the foundation of his entire research. However, his famous work on blackbody radiation and the ultraviolet catastrophe in 1900 ultimately changed his mind. I won't go too much into detail on this specific work as I have covered it in this video here, which I will link in the description. But in a so-called act of desperation, Max used Boltzmann's probability method to derive his equation modeling blackbody radiation, which introduced Planck's constant and birthed quantum physics. When Planck saw his equation fit experimental data for radiative bodies, his whole perspective shifted, and he began to switch sides, from energeticism to atomism. In 1901, he published a paper regarding the energy and entropy of what he called resonators. A resonator, according to Planck, is a sphere typically made of iron with a perfectly black hole in it that acts as a perfect black body. It absorbs electromagnetic radiation when cold and emits electromagnetic radiation when hot. It is here where he proposes his crucial idea. We now set the entropy, S sub n, of the system proportional to the logarithm of its probability w, within an arbitrary additive constant, so that the n resonators together have the energy E sub n. This is the first time the constant shows up in history, and Planck merges this idea with ideas from his previous papers to derive a version of Planck's law that describes the spectral radiance of a resonator, meaning the power emitted from the resonator per unit projected area of emitting surface per unit solid angle per spectral unit. As you can see, both Planck's constant and the Boltzmann constant are here. A little bit prior to Planck's 1901 paper, fellow German physicist Ferdinand Kuhlbaum experimentally measured the total energy emitted into air from one square centimeter of a black body at a set temperature in one second. 
Planck used this data in his equations to determine values for his two constants and reached a value for h of 6.55 times 10 to the negative 34th joules per hertz and a value for k of 1.346 times 10 to the negative 23rd joules per kelvin, which both are incredibly close to today's accepted value. Now Planck, in his paper, gave all credit of the probability considerations to Boltzmann, which, over time, led to a misinterpretation that Planck's equation was also derived from Boltzmann, which is why Boltzmann bears the name of both the constant and the entropy formula, and why both terms are engraved on his gravestone. Perhaps, if Planck were to have worded things differently in his paper, he just may have had two fundamental constants named after him. Regardless, he couldn't have discovered either constant without Boltzmann, and both played integral roles in the eventual discovery of both the entropy formula and the Boltzmann constant. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Click here if you want to see more scientific progress made during this time period. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.